percent. Uh, I thought Hancock early, like in first inning, maybe the first two batters of the second inning, was just uh, was just okay. Sitting 92 to 94, touching 95 with his fastball, not really throwing much else in the first inning. Uh, but then in the second inning, going to uh, a 76 to 80 mile an hour curveball quite a bit in the second. It was mostly 75, 76, but I saw a couple of harder ones. Uh, an average pitch, I thought. Uh, he finished it pretty well, flashed above average. Um and his final three innings of work, though, I mean, I, I was a bit underwhelmed through two innings, but knowing that it was just one start and it was just two innings, I wasn't really down on Hancock at that point. I just, this just might end up being one of those starts. And then he kind of flipped the switch. In his final three innings, he looked the part of the number six pick, sitting 92 to 96, pitching easy and with command at 95. He touched 97 four times for me. He touched 98 once. He mixed in a slider, 84 to 87, that flashed plus and a plus changeup in the mid-80s that was better at 87 to 88, I thought, than it was at 85. Uh, He threw the changeup where he wanted to. It was very impressive. The slider and curveball went for strikes early in counts, and he knocked on the back door a few times with, you know, both lefties and uh, right-handers with some of those pitches, pitching pitching away to right-handers and lefties with bold breaking balls. I thought that was pretty impressive. His fastball command was fringe average overall in this game, but after the first couple of innings, uh, he did throw a lot more strikes and hit a lot more spots uh, at a high rate, beat batters with velocity and, and a bit of arm side run with the pitch. It was especially effective in and down to right-handers and up to lefties in the zone, inducing eight whiffs on 16 swings. It appeared that Hancock had made a point in this start to throwing all of his secondaries you know, quite a bit, despite not really needing to. Like He was going to beat this lineup with velocity, and the velocity came easy uh you know pretty good display of some big time arm strength his delivery was in rhythm uh that's plus to elite arm speed as well and he was very consistent from fastball to off speed stuff with that uh, with that arm speed one note i made was the velocity on his curveball i mentioned that it was 76 to 80 it was really 75 to 80 i got a couple of 75s in there um but in college his curveball was known as a, a firm curveball that reached the low 80s but there were, there were several at 76 and one or two at 75, which makes me wonder if he's made a grip change or done something different to, uh, uh, to, to pull a little more velocity off that pitch. Maybe it's to avoid his two breaking balls blending together a little too much. That tends to happen quite a bit. Isaiah Campbell has that issue. We've talked about uh, Justin Dunn has that issue. There are two different pitches, but there's not significant difference sometimes between the two. Um, a lot of times you just, you just pull a couple of miles an hour extra velocity off one and it makes all the difference in the world. So maybe that's what's going on, but I'm not, uh, I'm not sure his changeup again, projects as plus, uh, maybe better as a chance to be a double plus pitch. And I felt like anytime he wanted to get a strikeout, he could go to the changeup. Anytime he got to two strikes, if he went to the changeup, he was probably going to get it because early in the game, you know, throwing 95 plus, and dominating with the fastball and getting swings and misses on the fastball, that's the first thing a hitter has to protect, the fastball, the velocity. Uh, but he backed off the changeup a little bit. I mean, he threw it, but th- there were innings where he didn't throw it a whole lot uh, or at all and went to the breaking ball. So it did feel like he was making sure he got his work in and, and was getting a feel for uh, for both breaking balls. Uh, his arm slot, still a high three-quarter, very consistent, stayed on top for the most part, which is important for all of his pitches. And from his 6'5 frame, created easy, natural playing on his fastball. None of that is actually different from when he was in school. Relative to his college days, though, it appeared uh, he was staying closed a little longer, which in theory could create a little bit more deception and, and make sure that he's using his lower half to drive toward the plate and create that velocity rather than putting pressure on the arm. When you open up a little early, you tend to put more pressure on the arm. There was a bit of chatter back in 2019 that such a mechanical flaw might be the reason for the lat injury. I mean, it's just speculation at this point. But uh, if that indeed was the case, it does appear that they've addressed that, that the Mariners and Hancock have uh, addressed that. Uh, He did hit 99 for me once. And I believe the stadium gun broke on this pitch and went to double zero. Um, and, you know, Hancock's touched 99 in the past. I just wasn't expecting to see that. I had 99.1 on the pitch, which is uh, which is a big-time fastball. It was uh, swung and missed at the top of the zone. And it came in his final inning. And on his final fastball, he hit 95 miles an hour.
That was the 93rd and final pitch of the night for Hancock. Uh, I thought his curveball looked good at times. The slider there, there uh, his harder version of the slider. I thought that was a good pitch.